Great. Welcome back, everybody. Thanks for coming back. And the first thing that I would like to do is uh, share my screen with you. And we're going to do the videos that uh, we had a little bit of trouble with yesterday. Can you all see that OK? All right, so this is the elbow range of motion where we have the joint supported um, by the bone above and below. So we're just actually moving the elbow just slowly into flexion and extension, uh, taking it to the point where we may have a little bit of initial discomfort, but certainly not pain. And here we have the uh, stifle range of motion, the same idea. We support the joint above and below and we just move that particular joint and we can see um, that it's very comfortable in a normal dog. But of course, if we have a post-operative patient, we need to go a little bit slower, perhaps not as much excursion and flexion and extension. Eventually, we want to get to the point where we do a bicycling motion where we move all of the joints together simultaneously. And the reason why this is important is because some muscles cross two joints. And if we just move one joint, we never take advantage of the complete muscle stretch in all positions. And so this is a more functional um, type of range of motion, but only when the patient is comfortable enough to um, tolerate this type of motion. This is a standing exercise. We mentioned that this dog had um, two sites of hemilaminectomies and was quite severely affected. So one of the early limb use exercises to help um, strengthen the supporting muscles, the extensor muscles, are standing exercises. So you can see that the dog gets a little bit weak, starts to collapse, and then the therapist will pick the dog up make sure that the dog is standing in a square symmetrical position. And what we're trying to do is work on not only strengthening the muscles, but also the awareness of where the body is. So kind of joint proprioception and limb proprioception. And it's important that the dog be in a square standing position doing this to make those connections between the nerves and the brain that this is where the leg should be standing. This dog, as we mentioned previously, had severe cervical spinal cord disease, had a dorsal laminectomy, and we have the peanut underneath the dog, and then we have the sling support for the forelimbs and the pelvic limbs. And we're just trying to do a little bit of movement. You can see that left forelimb reaching out and moving just a little bit. The uh, right forelimb is not as active. It was more severely affected, but even uh, with a little bit of extra motion, we can see some motor function of the right. So this can certainly be um, an important technique if we have some of these large or giant breeds of dogs just to um, reduce the amount of lifting that the therapist has to do. And we can move both the sling and the ball to get the dog to try and take a couple of baby steps there. This is a wobble board or bounce board. And what we're doing here is just gently rocking the ball or the board back and forth while the dog is supported, trying to shift the weight and get the body to react. So in other words, when the weight shifts between the left and the right, the dog should be able to adjust and um, feel or sense where that body position is going and react accordingly. This is a technique called rhythmic stabilization where we have the dog on a peanut like this or a trampoline, and we're gently going to bounce the dog up and down. And so the reflex of the dog is to uh, initially start to collapse, and then the extensor muscles will kick in to help keep the um, dog in a standing position. Now, if you do this type of activity on solid ground, usually the dog just will sit down. But when we have a little bit of um, spring to the surface, such as this peanut, then the reflex is to contract the extensor muscles. So we're not only getting uh, strengthening of the extensor muscles, we're also getting some joint position awareness training or some joint proprioceptive training. We said that dogs can exercise on a treadmill. Here you see the dog is uh, perfectly content to walk on the treadmill all by itself. Um, the gait pattern is very similar on the treadmill versus over ground. So this is also an excellent way to assess lameness because we can 
watch a series of strides from the side, the front, the back, the top, and it really is a good way to assess very subtle lamenesses. And it's also good from an exercise and therapy standpoint. Taking it one step further, this is an underwater treadmill where the dog is walked into a chamber, the door is sealed, and the water is um, placed into the treadmill, pumped in. And this dog is about four or five days after cruciate ligament repair. And you can see that the buoyancy of the water really encourages the dog to use the leg very fully. And the belt moving underneath the dog also challenges proprioception. Walking through the water increases the strengthening of the muscles because it takes more muscle effort to walk through water than it does over ground through the air. And then of course, swimming, um, that's a step further in terms of cardiovascular conditioning, but the joint motion is different with swimming versus walking in water. So with swimming, we have much more flexion, but not full extension. With walking in an underwater treadmill, we have extension of the joints to the point where the dog you know, has a standing position, but we also have more flexion. This is the wheelbarrowing exercise where we pick up the back end of the dog and then move the dog forward, kind of like pushing a wheelbarrow. Again, trying to get more muscle strengthening of the forelimbs as well as increased flexion of the elbow and increased extension of the shoulder. Here's a dog doing the dancing motion. And if you'll notice, when we move the dog forward and then we change directions and move backwards, you can see how the dog becomes more vertical when dancing backwards. And so this opens up the hip angle. And it can be a little bit uncomfortable for dogs that have hip dysplasia, whereas moving in a forward position has less extension of the hip, but yet we still get more muscle strengthening because the weight is being transferred to the pelvic limbs. So it is good for gluteal muscle strengthening, uh, quadriceps strengthening, and so forth. And then as the dog develops more tolerance to having the hip extended, we can transition to backwards dancing. This is the sit to stand exercise where we said we wanted the affected leg against a wall. And that way the dog has to push up squarely and symmetrically and use both extensor groups equally on each limb. And here you can see the dog is sitting squarely and symmetrically and then pushes off equally with both limbs. <clears throat> Here's a dog doing Cavaletti rails, and you can see that we're trying to increase elbow flexion. This dog has had some elbow issues, but by having them step over these rails, especially the higher ones, you can see how the dog has to flex the elbow more to step over the rails. And then in the pelvic limb, you can see the stifle and the hock joint have to flex more to negotiate over the rail. So Cavaletti rails can be good from both an increased flexion of certain joints and a proprioceptive standpoint. We can do pole weaving. We mentioned that we wanna teach the dog how to begin to turn and pivot under controlled conditions so that they know which muscle groups to use as they begin to turn and pivot and re-enter normal activity. We don't want them to spin around and turn and damage whatever repair that we have because they can't control the muscles. We can also, um, if we look from the top view here, have the uh, vertical pole weaving as an exercise to increase flexibility of the spinal column, especially if we have arthritis of the spinal column. And then we can combine resistance activity with this TheraBand with exercise on the treadmill. And you can see every time that the dog pulls the right hind leg forward, he's pulling against the resistance of the TheraBand and working on the flexors of the hip and the extensors of the stifle. This is a different view or different use of the TheraBand where we can pull laterally during the swing phase of the gait and the dog has to pull the leg in a more adducted position. So if we have medial shoulder instability, which we'll be talking about in just a bit here, this can be one exercise to strengthen the subscapularis muscle and the other adductors of the forelimb. We can strengthen the flexor muscles by putting a leg weight. Remember that each stride is a repetition. So if you do any exercise or weightlifting yourself, 
you know that after a few uh, repetitions, you can be relatively fatigued. And so this dog is doing one repetition every stride. So we tend to use relatively light weights and maybe limit the activity to 30 to 50 strides with maybe some rest in between. Here's the example of core strengthening where we have the dog's forelimbs steady on a platform and then we're just gently moving the um, roll backwards and forwards. We wanna make sure that the hind legs stay on the roll and we're actually working the core muscles and not just uh, moving the feet to adjust the position. So it can take a little practice. Here we have a one-legged core exercise by holding the other leg up and that can be quite challenging. Here's something that owners can do by having the dog place the forelimbs on a wagon or cart. And you can see that the back legs are planted firmly in position. We're just rolling a few millimeters just to engage the core while keeping the pelvic limbs in a fixed position. So the goal is not to get the dog to move forward. That would be more of a proprioceptive activity. Here we're trying to strengthen the core. And this is a little bit more advanced um, strengthening exercise where we have the dog in a sphinx position on the giant peanut. We're going to use a treat. We also have a training harness in place. And then we're gonna have the dog push up. It's almost like doing a, a push up that a person would do by extending the elbow and then pushing up into a standing position. And that's a very challenging activity. It takes a lot of strength, a lot of triceps muscle um, contraction to get to that point. So this is a more advanced exercise. And you can see that this dog is very treat motivated, so it makes it a little bit easier to do the exercise. And then controlled ball playing in an in a, uh, area that has some restrictions so the dog can't go too far, but you can see the amount of power in just those two or three strides that the dog is really pushing off quite hard in both legs uh, to chase after the ball. So this would be an end stage strength and power and speed type of an exercise. Okay, so we'll move on at this point 